So let me go back to my first workspace here and I'm going to stop the application and then get rid of this terminal. And by the way, you can see all of our logs here. We're getting an undefined here and I know why this is happening. I had a typo somewhere in the controller and I'm going to fix that in a second. So that's why we're seeing all these undefined here, which is supposed to be the uh, URL, but we're going to fix that in a second. So let's exit out of this and I want to go to the controller. So let's go to the controller and in this file, if you look here, let me scroll down. Um, if you look on this line, on line 36 here, you see that I'm creating this patient on the fly and I'm trying to get the ID from the inserted ID. So that's going to be the ID of the patient that just got created, which we're getting from the result. But what I want to do is I want this query when it runs, I want it to return the newly created patient to me so that I don't have to create this patient on the fly. I can just get the patient coming from the result. And to do this, one solution that I found is to create something called a stored procedure. And it's really pretty easy. And that's what we're going to be doing right now, because I don't want to have to create this patient on the fly. I want that whenever I run the query to create a patient and then the patient is created successfully, I want to get that patient from the database, the newly created patient, the entire object, and then return it instead of me having to do this here on line 36, you know, creating this object literal and then passing the information, which is the same information that the user passed to me. And then I'm getting the new date from the, uh, from the system from JavaScript. So I'm not really getting the information coming from the database. I'm just recreating this. I mean, besides the ID, of course, but everything else, I'm just creating it on the fly. So one solution that I found is I can create a store procedure, which is a fancy way of saying a function in SQL. Instead of having a statement, you can put multiple different statements in one function, and that's called the store procedure. I mean, it can get a little bit more complicated than that, but that's the idea. You have multiple different statements uh, executing one after the other inside one uh, process or one isolated process. So I'm going to leave this here for now, and I want to go to the init file. So we're going to say init.sql. So inside of this file is where we have to make the change so that we can create the store procedure. So I'm going to go to the bottom and then I'm going to start down here and I'm going to scroll up so you guys can see what I'm doing. So let's scroll up a little bit more. So what I'm going to do here is to define the store procedure and then we're going to recreate this database and then recreate this table and it's going to create this store procedure and then we can call that store procedure whenever we're creating the patient and that store procedure is going to return the newly created patient to us so that we don't have to create this patient on the fly. So whenever you're going to create a store procedure, the first thing you have to do is to specify a delimiter. So to do this, I'm going to say the limiter and then I'm going to use, uh, let's say two forward slashes. Okay. So that's going to be my delimiter and I'm just going to copy this line and then paste it down and paste it down again. So this one is going to be end. So I'm going to end the delimiter. So I'm going to put end here and then I'm going to set the delimiter again to what it was, which is semicolon. So I'm going to save that. So all the code that we're going to write, it's going to go inside here. So the code is going to go in here, all the code that we need to create the store procedure. So it's really important that you pass in this delimiter here. Otherwise, uh, MySQL won't understand what you're trying to do here because by default, it's trying to read everything as a statement. So let's go ahead and create the procedure. So to do this, we have to use the keyword create procedure. So we're going to say procedure. So that's going to create the store procedure and we have to give it a name. So I'm going to say create uh, underscore and underscore return. So that's going to create the patient. We can call it create patient and return. You know, you can give it whatever name you want. And then we have to pass in the variables. You can have in variable, so a variable that you're only gonna accept, but you're not gonna return. We can have out variable, so variable that you're gonna uh, push back out to the user, and then you can have both. So it's gonna be like an in out variable, which means it can be taken in, and you can also return it to the user. In our case, we need to get some in variables. So to do this, we're gonna say n, and we're gonna take the first name. So we need the first name, and then now we have to specify the type. So that's gonna be var char again 255. So this is going to be the first variable that we're going to take, which is going to be coming into this. So that's why we're specifying the N and then we give it the name. So that's the first name. And then we give it the type, which is var char 255. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy all this. So let's go back and copy this. And then I'm just going to paste it. So here I'm going to paste it. Uh, I need to put a space here. I'm going to paste it again for the email. And then I'm going to paste it again for the phone, paste it again for the address. And then we're going to paste it again for the diagnosis. And then we can paste it again for the image URL. So paste it again. So let's go to the beginning and see what we're doing here. And I'm going to scroll up so that I can see the variable that I'm trying to set. So you know that we're not passing in the ID. That's because it's auto increment. So MySQL is just going to auto increment it. And then it's going to add the new value to the next patient that we add in the table. So we don't have to specify the ID and we're not taking the ID 
either because we don't need it. MySQL will take care of it. And then uh, let's change the second first name. So this one is not going to be the first name. It's actually going to be the last name. So we're going to change these three and then we're going to say last name. So we're taking in the first name, then we take in the last name. And what the next thing we have is the email. So I'm going to change this whole thing and then pass an email. And I think I'm going to just put this on a new line. So I'm going to go on a new line and move this over a little, maybe like about right here. So we get the first name, we get the last name, and then we get the email. So let's change this to phone. And then we have to pass in the address. So address. And then we have to pass in the diagnosis. So let's change this to diagnosis. And I'm going to put the next one on the new line. So let's go over here and then put this on the new line. After the diagnosis, we need to pass in the image URL. So we're going to say image URL. Okay. So we're taking in all of the values that we need inside of the parameters of the function or the store procedure. And then I'm going to change this to a closing parenthesis. So now we have all of the values that we need to be passed in for the store procedure, as you can see that I'm doing here. Okay. So that's all we're doing here. So we're creating the store procedure, which is technically some kind of a function. So we use the delimiter and then we pass in the keyword create procedure, and then we give it a name create and return, which is going to create the patient and then return the patient. And then we're taking in some variables. So the first name, which is incoming variable. We're not going to return those variables to the user. We're just going to take them in. That's why we have the in keyword. And then we have the first name, last name, email, phone, address, diagnosis, image URL. And then after that, we're going to have to pass in the query that we want to be executed. So what this was doing is just getting the values that we need to execute the query. So to do this, we're going to start with the word begin. And then in here is where we're going to pass in all these uh, queries that we need to run. So the first one is going to be insert into. So that's going to be inserting into the table. Actually, I think we can go ahead and get this. So let's go inside of the query and then we can just copy all this. So I'm going to put this here and then copy everything here. So I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to go back to our file and I'm going to go here and let's see if we can paste this here and then paste it. So I'm going to remove that last comma and I'm going to remove that as well. Go to the beginning and I'm going to delete some of this stuff. So we need to delete all this. So insert into and in the table. So we're going to pass in the first name, last name, email, phone, address, diagnosis, image URL, and then the values are going to be the same value. So instead of question marks, we're going to get in the same value. So let's go back here and then let's uh, copy everything here. So I'm going to select all these words and then go over here and then paste everything and then delete all this. So what we're doing here is in here, when we're passing in all of these variables, we're specifying what we want to set. So we want to set the first name, the last name, the email, the phone, the address, the diagnosis, and the image URL. I need to get rid of one of these. And we're passing in all these values. And these values are coming from what we get up here. So if I highlight this, so right here. So all these values that we're getting in as in parameter or incoming variable for the function, we're passing them as the values. So we have to get rid of the question marks and passing in the actual values because we get them from the create store procedure, which is highlighted here. So I hope that makes sense, but that's pretty much what we're doing. So let's make sure this statement is ended. So I'm going to go over here and in here, I'm going to end this statement. And then the next thing we want to do is to get the last inserted ID. So now I'm going to scroll up a little bit so you guys can see. And then I need to get this ID by calling in the last inserted ID. So to specify this, I'm going to get a variable. So I'm going to set the patient ID. So I'm going to say patient underscore ID. So that's a variable that I'm defined here. And then I'm going to set it equal to the last underscore inserted underscore ID. So this is going to give us the last inserted ID, which is going to be the ID of that patient. And this is supposed to be insert. So last insert ID. So now we can go ahead and then select the patient by that ID. So here uh, we're going to say select everything from the patient's table. So patients where the ID equal that ID that we just specified. So patient ID. And we can put space in between this just to make sure you guys can see it clearly. So pretty easy. This is going to return the patient 
and that's going to give us the patient by that ID because it's the last inserted ID as these two queries are ran uh, subsequently. So we specified the delimiter and then we create a store procedure with all the parameters that we need inside of the begin. That's where we're going to begin our queries. And then we specify the first query to run. So that's insert the information inside of the table. And then we get a hold of the ID and then we select everything for that patient by that particular ID. And that's what the store procedure is going to return. So I'm going to go ahead and save the file. And then what I'm going to do is to just rerun the container so that it can reread this file again and then create the store procedure.